Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Daryl here, and today it's a build day in the studio, which is always super exciting. So hopefully if everything goes smoothly today, we're gonna assemble the entire guitar and hopefully do some tones. Now, if you guys missed part one, where I unboxed all the parts, talked about why I chose them, you know, what they are, how they're all gonna work together, you can check it out by following the link above. Other than that, let's jump in and build this beast. Now, before we launch into the full build, we need to get one thing out of the way. Because I've used a Warmoth body in a previous build, along with Obsidian Wire Electronics, there was one thing we need to check. So as you guys can see, yes indeed, we are having clearance issues. This was the first thing I wanted to check out, just as I said before, having experienced it with these two parts in the past. Now, Obsidian Wire kits fit on a regular Fender guitar perfectly. There's no clearance issues. I think the Warmoth bodies are just slightly narrower in the routed cavity than an actual Fender. So, no big deal, but it's something that you guys need to know if you're going to choose these two parts. Warmoth body, Obsidian Wire electronics, there could be clearance issues which means we got to head out to the garage with the Dremel. All right, you guys, we're back in the studio. As you can see, I've clearanced out this little chunk right here and then kind of widened this area for the back pot. So I marked it out with a marker and then just took the Dremel, as you guys saw, and just kind of took that down a little bit to fit. Now, I'm not sure why Warmoth bodies tend to be a little narrower uh, in this section, uh, but they are. Like I said before, I've used obsidian wire and they drop, you know, straight into strats every time. So not sure why, you know, I ran into that twice with uh, Warmoth bodies. Still well worth it in my mind, but something to be aware of. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is wire up the pickguard. Now, as you can see, I've already installed the pickups because I wanted to check the clearances and all that stuff, but it's not wired up. I've taped the wires so that they fit really nice in the, the wiring channels on our guitar. And the humbuckers are four wires, which means they're splittable. And of course, they all go into our little solderless connection point there. And this is part is almost impossible to kind of show on camera, but all you do is you depress I'll just do one of these for an example so that you can see, hopefully. My hands are always in the way. But anyway, you, you pick a terminal, you depress it, put the wire in, take it off, and you're wired up. So literally no soldering. That's all it takes. And of course, we've got our instructions <laughs> in the booklet. So we're doing, as you can see, the custom HSH, and it tells you exactly where to put each wire in there. So that comes with the kit. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be back in a second. So everything seems to be working okay. We plugged the pick guard into the amp and I just tapped on the pickups, moved the selector, made sure everything seemed to be working okay. And so far, so good. Now what we need to do is finish up the wiring. So we need to put a ground wire from the trem claw on the back of the guitar um, into our electronics. This one's really important because as you put your hand or touch the strings, um, it uses your whole body as a ground, keeps everything super quiet. So that's uh, the wire that's uh, you know responsible for that. So we don't want to forget that. So let's do that now. All right, now let's install the spring claw. So as you guys can see, these are pre-drilled by Warmoth, which is greatly appreciated. And also, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but anyway, right there, this is where your ground wire goes through also pre-drilled so that's awesome so i found a uh, an old claw in my uh, parts bin there but you can get these anywhere you get guitar parts it looks like i had extended the wire at some point but anyway uh, so what we're going to do is just slip this ground right through there and this takes it right into the control cavity so what we're going to do is take that ground attach it to our obsidian wire uh, electronics i'll show you guys that in a second so let's just put that through there and then let's install the claw itself. And obviously, you know, this takes a lot of adjustment. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna kinda get it started. Um, we won't know until we have the strings on and, uh, you know, the trim in place before we go and adjust this. I'll probably show you guys a little bit of that as well. Uh, but for now, let's just get it started. Just enough to hold it in place. Got to keep good pressure on this uh, so that it doesn't strip the screws because that's no fun. So anyway, just sort of engage it enough so that it's not going to be, you know, flopping around too much. Then let's flip it over. 
All right, so any other grounds you have will go right into this terminal here. It's just a little set screw. I'll try to do it without getting my hands too much in front of the camera. It's a little tricky to show you guys exactly what's going on. But anyway, uh, we want to loosen that just enough so that it hopefully doesn't fall out. Take your ground wire, and I'm probably going to block the camera here. But anyway, you just slip it into the terminal if I can do so. Yes, there it goes. Take your screw. Tighten it back up. I'm just going to leave my hand here until I know the wire's not going to slip out, and then I'll show you guys. There you go. So just tightening that up there. That's all it is. And that is my wire for my trim. Locked in nice and tight. Super easy. All right, so we're making some great progress. Let's keep cruising on. Let's take the output jack, put it into its housing. So we'll just slip it through like that. Now, you do not want this coming loose, so make sure that you put your washer on there. And then you can kind of just get it started uh, with your fingers if you want to. See if I can do that. There we go. And then grab a socket and cinch it down. Now, this is really common on Squires and other, you know, sort of lower end guitars that the jack will become loose and, uh, you know, your cables crackling and all that kind of stuff. Most of the time, it's not a problem with your electronics or your pickups. Just, you know, undo these two screws, pull it out, hold it there, take a socket and just, you know, cinch it right down, put it back on you know, likely your problem will be solved. So there we go. We're getting ready to the point, I think, where we can drill all our holes into the guitar, attach the pick guard, attach the output jack. We're getting close. Now at this stage of the build is when I always start to sweat bullets because it's time to attach everything to the body, which means drilling a ton of holes, screwing it all down. I'm always nervous I'm going to crack the finish or something's going to go on crooked or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's where we're at. I need to drill all my holes, screw everything down. All right, so I've mocked everything up. I think it's looking good. Let's screw it down. Here we go. First hole. No turning back. Here we go. All right, let's keep going on and do the pick guard. All right, so let's take the neck back off. It was just sitting in the pocket just to help position the pick guard. And we can remove our tape. Everything is attached, so let's hope for the best here. Looks like the pick guard is very, very nicely in the center of the horn. So I don't know if I can get it in camera here. So. That looks real sharp. I think we got the right angle there, so that's good. Neck pocket, while we're looking at it, the pick guard outlines that pocket really nice. So hopefully fitment uh, will be good to go. Now, of course, if you do this, just use painter's tape because it is low adhesive, just enough to hold things in place. And let's, uh, well, we might as well test out that jack too. When you're uh, initially you know, placing it and taping it, before you uh, screw it and just make sure, yeah, that your cable can go in and out perfectly. Sometimes if it's too high, it'll hit the, uh, the cavity walls. So just be careful for that, um, but looks perfect. Easy in, easy out, we're good to go. So I'm feeling pretty good about the body, looking great so far. Everything, you know, fitment wise looks really great. Now it's time for the trim. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, I've already started to relic the body. Yeah, I should have taped this off before, you know, test fitting the trim and all that stuff. Anyway, I guess guitars are made to be played and whatnot, all that kind of stuff. So with the Vega trim system, um, the studs were pre-installed, as I mentioned uh, in the first video from Warmoth, so that's great. Now there are um, both imperial and metric uh, sort of screw adapters that will go in. So first things first, we need to put these guys in. Now they are slotted, so if you need to uh, use a screwdriver or whatever, these little inserts are slotted. So, you know, mine are going in pretty easy, but if you do need to, you know, use a screwdriver, uh, that helps as well. Now that the inserts are in, we'll just put our Vega trim bar over top and attach our screws and we're off to the races. And that's kind of like the part one. Now it is very similar to uh, the six screw Vega trim system. So this bar on the six screw one, will just have two extra holes that will go into your six screw system. Here, obviously we just have our studs. So once our inserts are in, boom, we'll just attach these. And I would recommend kind of leaving them loose just in case you need to slide it side to side or whatever to center your trim. But that's really all there is to it. 
Once this bar is in, then we can attach the actual trim unit, which will be amazing. So here's a closer look at the Vega trim bar. As you can see, the notches in the pit guard um, are pretty much the same distance. So really, really great. Super happy with uh, you know how that all shook out, which means we've pretty much got that, uh, that pit guard dead center. So it's looking really great. And it's snugged right into the top notch of that uh, pit guard as well. I don't know if the camera will grab that. Perhaps? No? <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully you guys can see. Anyway, there's no space between that bar and the pit guard. Sorry for the focus there. But anyway, uh, yeah, super happy with, you know, how it's situated. Now let's move on. All right, so now it's time for the main trim installation. One of the small things that Vega Trim does is it has a little set screw for your springs. So you'll notice my springs aren't falling out because they're actually locked in with little set screws. Something small that no one else is doing just makes installation a lot easier as you're trying to hook this into the claw and this into the block and whatever. So um, yeah, just a nice little touch. All right, let's attach the trim. So we're gonna take the springs, slip them down in and like so. Now, the trim itself has, you know, little blades that sit in the Vega trim bar that we already attached. That's how it pivots and it is super duper smooth. So I'm just going to put some pressure on it to roughly hold it in place. Take the bar off. See if I can hold that there. Flip the body over. And as you can see, we've got our springs. And I'm going to have to, I think, attach uh, put these, uh, the claw springs in a little bit deeper, but that's basically how she sits. And then we'll put the, uh, the springs through the back of the block. As you can tell at the bottom of the block, uh, there's not near enough room. So there are spots uh, about midway up the block to put your springs in, but for now we're all set. Okay, I think we're getting close to attaching the neck. This is getting serious. Now, sometimes on a build, it's the small things that make a big difference. So I bought a bone nut for this guitar, but as you can see, hopefully anyway, it's a little bit different than your standard bone nut. It's a scalloped bone nut. So since we have the whole scallop neck thing going on, I thought I'd get something, you know, interesting. So I'll take a close up shot of it. But yeah, you know, probably no one would ever notice unless, you know, they look really, really closely, but I'll know that it's there. And it's just kind of one of those touches that, uh, you know, goes with the overall aesthetic of the neck. Uh, really cool. And of course it's a bone nut, so it should really help hold tune. Well, I think we've officially arrived at the part where this parts caster becomes a guitar. All right, our scalloped neck super strat is almost done. I'm gonna string it up, set up the trim, and let's test out some tones. All right, you guys, it's time for our tone test. I'm pretty excited about this. So I've strung it up with a set of tens. I've got the trim set parallel to the body pretty much. Um, yeah, I didn't lock down the nut until the strings are stretched. For now, I've got the bone nut on there and uh, we're just gonna see how well it holds tune. Yeah, a little bit worried I'm gonna be playing everything sharp, but that's okay. We've got our Dark Moon pickups. These are wound to be pretty hot, uh, but not like modern metal kind of hot, kind of like 80s hot. That's, you know, what they're designed to be. So anyway, we're gonna plug it into the Hughes & Kettner, the GM Deluxe 40, and I'm going straight to the Ultra Channel, which is, you know, super, super high gain. We're gonna have some fun, test out the trim. Here we go.
So yeah, that definitely answered my question. This does what an 80s Super Strat is supposed to do, which is be a little bit outrageous. Um, this is why I love the Vega trim. You know, you can do all the bombing, the pulling up, the squealies, all that kind of stuff without the headache of a full, you know, locking Floyd Rose system. So I was happy uh, with it on my Mexican Strat. Super happy I went with it again. Loving that. And of course, the, the bridge pickup with the, the combination of the Hughes and Kettner just absolutely screams. And you know what? I was really, really worried about the, the scallop neck and it's been okay so far so anyway first impressions is it's outrageous it's fun it's everything you know a super strat should be while we're having fun why don't we do our one minute solo so i'm just going to do a short jam over a backing track link to the backing track as always is in the video description so i'll just kind of noodle around a bit and explore the guitar and then after that we'll do some actual you know clean tones so you you guys can hear the pickup so let's start with the jam then hit up some clean tones So here are my final thoughts on the 80s scallop neck super strat here's a few things that i like about this guitar number one the pickups sound fantastic this bridge pickup is just a beast it you know handles as much gain as you throw at it no problem now when you start to back off the gain and go into your clean tones it sounds really really nasally which is you know common to every high output humbucker that's you know the Achilles heel they sound fantastic with high gain that's what they're designed for if you want clean tones uh, bright clean tones in your bridge uh, they're not gonna sound great that's where this little single coil comes to the rescue I know not everybody likes to have you know a single coil in the middle they're like it gets in my in the way of my picking hand uh, mine's really low so you know I've lowered that way down and it sounds fantastic. It's bright, it's clean, it's open. Uh, it's everything that the bridge humbucker is not. That's why I like having it there. So if I want a bright, clean, chimey tone, I always have it right here. If I want, you know, copious amounts of gain, it's right here. So they both sound fantastic, uh, designed to do what they do. And the neck pickup, very, very smooth, creamy. Um, yeah, love the sound of the pickups. Number two is the Vega Tram. You guys know I love the Vega Tram. I'm gonna stop talking about it in a second. Uh, I'm gonna mention one thing. I have 10 gauge strings on this guitar and I have the low uh, tension springs, okay? So you can see the claw is almost all the way up into the body, but I didn't wanna to go to the, the medium tension springs because this just, 
is so smooth. I love the low tension springs, so you can use them on 10 gauge strings, uh, but your claw is gonna have to be almost all the way up. So anyway, that's how I have it set up. Love this trim. And finally, I need to address the neck. First of all, the profile of those mid 80s Fender necks are just perfection, at least for me. Um, you know, the back profile is just perfect. So nice. In my opinion, nicer than anything else they're putting out right now. Now, the scalloping, I was pretty worried I was gonna you know, put everything sharp. And when I was doing some of the bar chords and the clean test, it was a little tricky to get it perfectly in tune, but it wasn't impossible. Like I didn't feel like, oh, I'm never gonna get this thing in tune. Um, but I did have to be careful, especially like I said, doing bar chords where you're doing different amounts of pressure just because of the strength of your fingers, um, you know, it's a little trickier and I'm sure you guys heard that, but in terms of like single notes and stuff, uh, it wasn't that bad. So I was super worried about it. In the end, it wasn't that bad. It does feel different, but if you're used to playing on like extra jumbo frets, you know, things like Ibanez or, or Schecter or ESP or whatever, um, you know, going to the full scallop didn't feel that bad. Thanks so much for coming along and watching a brand new guitar get born. All the parts I used will be listed in the video description below, along with the t-shirt store, tab store, all that stuff is down there. Yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this build. Have yourself a fantastic week.